What is cracking, big dogs? Welcome back to the channel. It's your boy Nick here. Big dogs got to eat fantasy football. I'm gonna do a mock draft for you guys today. I get a lot of requests to do these. I don't like them. I don't like to do them early in the preseason because the ADPs are all messed up, and uh, the way you're drafting now is just not even relevant to how you're gonna be drafting when your drafts actually come around. But I haven't done one in probably three to four weeks, so I figured, why not get back into it to get a little flavor back out there? And I gotta. Give my subscribers what they want, right? Because I love you guys. I'm drafting from the eight spot. And I'll be honest, I haven't done a mock, like an actual fantasy football mock draft, maybe since the last video I did for you guys that was a mock draft. I don't really do them, I, I rarely do them this early. It's good, to, it's good to have a feel on the ADPs, I guess, to see where people value players at this point. It's not even July yet, so we have like two months until the actual drafts roll around, so y'all are crazy. All right, so we got a full league in the ESPN one. I'll be drafting from the eight spot. Like I said, I haven't done this in a while, so honestly, um, I'm just kind of going off the top of my head with statistics and how I feel about these players. This is 1,059% not planned. I can promise you that. Just diving in, just like a normal. Look at Team Kumar. Let's go. I love Harold and Kumar, yeah. There's one point in my life where I, me and my friend had memorized basically every single line from Harold and Kumar Go to Way Castle. It's the most absurd movie of all time in the best way possible. So again, this is 12-team PPR mock draft. I'm in the eighth spot. Now, my big league, my big money league, and I know a lot of you guys ask questions about it because um, we do the live draft and we put the video up. It's pretty cool. The settings for that, it, it's 10 guys, 10 teams. I know, obviously, like it'd be nice to be bigger. A lot of people say it's whatever, mediocre. First of all, F y'all. Second, it, it's a pretty big buy-in money-wise. So one, we can't really expand the league because not a lot of people want to join in. Two, it's... My close friends that I've been friends with from high school, so that it's eight. It's our eighth year doing a live draft, so we're a close knit group, and we don't want to just like have rando people join just because they could pay the buy in fee. So it's ten teams, point five PPR, one quarterback, two receivers, two running backs, a tight end, and then two flex spots that you can um, wide receiver, running back, tight end. I'm trying to transition. One, I want to get kickers the fuck out of the league. That's some bullshit. Two. I want to go two QBs, but no one, we do like a majority, we have league meetings throughout the summer and we do majority votes and no one ever wants to do two QBs. We do very minor rule changes usually. Instead of 25 yards for passing is a point, we do 20 yards. It's not, it's like barely really anything. Uh, we don't do any specials like 50 yards is, a, is an extra point or two points or whatever. We do keepers. Anyone picked a uh, 10th round or later can be kept the following year. We do, you can, you can keep two guys. So if you keep someone in, uh, that you picked in the 10th, you lose your ninth round pick the next year. You can also trade keeper picks throughout the summer if you want to. Whenever the draft starts, you have to make sure that you have as many picks as everybody else. So if you're trading like two draft picks for two keepers, that's fine, whatever. Uh, we don't keep free agents ever because that just gets too messy if you're able to keep like, you know, if you picked up someone who's a stud off the free agent market last year, like a Jordan Howard or something, and he ends up, you know, you can keep him this year for like a 17th round pick. Wait, wait, yeah, nah, we, we ain't about that life. So, draft's about to start. <laughs> Is there a better sound in the world than that? Yeah, there's probably like a thousand better sounds in the world. That shit's so annoying. But so we have the three backs off first: Bell, Johnson, Elliott. I'm going Antonio Brown over Elliott if I'm doing a full PPR league at the three spot for sure. Elliott's just not that involved with the passing game. I think he takes a little hit with the with the two linemen, Leary and uh, Doug Free, out of there. Zeke obviously top five pick, but full PPR I'd go Brown there. So in the eight spot, I don't expect any of these three guys to fall to me. I'd probably be looking in the direction of AJ Green, Jordy Nelson, or even Defonta Freeman. Call me crazy, but I love Freeman. Oh, Jordy just went before Julio and Beckham. So one of those, one of my three favorite wide receivers is falling to me, Julio, Odell, or A.J. Green. I like A.J. Green over Mike Evans this year. I, I, you know, I'm getting a lot of uh, feedback saying that Evans should be higher in my rankings. I'll do a rankings video sometime this week, but I don't know. Evans, uh, you know, he capitalized on a lot of deep balls. Like, he had a lot of deep balls thrown his way, and now with Deshaun Jackson... In Tampa, I think he loses a little bit of that. They already have Cameron Brait. They got O.J. Howard. So, like, obviously he's going to be a target monster and he's going to get a lot of those red zone targets. But there's there's a lot of other weapons there now. And I'm not sure that he's going to get the target levels that he had 
last year, you know. So uh, I like Green. Green before he went out with his injury last year. Oh, there goes Julio Odell. So I'm going to go Green. So Green played in, I think he was nine games total. Um, the ninth game was the one he got injured and left early. So if you go by the eight games, or maybe it was nine to ten, whatever it was, if you go by those first like full games that he played, he was on target to, um, if you prorated out the 16 games, he would have been the NFL leader in targets. Uh, I think he would have been the NFL leader in fantasy points as well. So AJ Green's going to go undervalued just because of the injury last year. Uh, he has that top three, top two, top one potential as a fantasy wide receiver. So I'm more than fine with him as my top wide receiver in my first round pick. So Evans went off right after me. T.Y., McCoy, Gordon. I don't get why T.Y. would be a first, a, first, a top 10 pick in PPR. You know, he's not a high reception total guy. He's high yardage, big plays and stuff like that. But mm, I was hoping DeMarco fell to me or Devonta. Either one would have been nice. Ooh, Amari Cooper. I like that. Um, I'm going Jay Ajayi here. I don't like Dez in a PPR play. Um, there are a few things I don't love about Jordan Howard, which I'll touch on. Gronk obviously is the health concern, and all those wide receivers are a whole tier out of where I value these running backs right here. So for me, Ajayi is just that guy, man. He is the end-all, be-all in that backfield. No competition. I don't want to hear like the Damian Williams, all that kind of nonsense. There's just so many reports saying how heavily Ajayi is going to be used, how much he's improved as a pass catcher. He's going to be that real, real workhorse there in um, in Miami. I don't think you could say the same for Jordan Howard there again. I mean, he was super productive, obviously, in the limited time. Um, but they brought in Benny Cunningham from from the Rams, who was obviously their pass catcher. Their fourth round pick was a was like a scat back pass catcher. I, I can't remember his name off the top of my head, um, but I, I think Jordan Howard takes a hit in the PPR department. Uh, their offense just isn't going to be very good. Obviously, they're not going to move. He's not going to have a lot of scoring opportunities. Sure, he should get a pretty big workload, but I, I just prefer Ajayi over Howard there big time. We had Ajayi Howard, Dez, Marshawn crept into the top 20. Interesting. I got a lot of questions on my channel. Like, would you go, like, if I put, say I put up like a sleeper video of running backs, right? Or just a sleeper video of wide receivers. On those videos, I'll say like, hey, what do you think about me going like really running back heavy and then picking these wide receiver sleepers? Or or should I go wide receiver heavy in the beginning and then go with these running back sleepers? I mean, it's a good idea in theory, but I think you should always base your draft picks off value and off tiers. Um, for instance, like Jay Ajayi uh, was there and I really like him. But if, you know, if you're looking, if you go into the draft saying, I'm going to go wide receiver heavy, it gets to that point and it's like Jay Ajayi and then all you have is Alshon, Demarius Thomas, DeAndre Hopkins. For me, those wide receivers are a whole tier outside of where Jay Ajayi is. The upside isn't even close to where his is. Uh, the team situations, all these kind of things. So I don't think you should go into a draft saying that I'm going to go here, 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 like this position, this position, this position. The mistake I made last year, a lot of people did going uh, zero RB to start their drafts. I did that in a lot of my leagues and I went, you know, three or four wide receivers off the rip. And, and it just comes to show that you need to go value based when it comes to that. That being said, I think you should definitely try to get a running back in the first two rounds three rounds the latest just because you know running back is just a it's a scary position if you don't have at least one stud working for you there so after Gronk Fournette was the first rookie at 22 Aaron Rodgers the first quarterback at 26 Todd Gurley fudge out of here wow Doug Baldwin with the 30 he almost fell to me okay so this is an interesting one because now we're getting to the point where it's a lot of a lot of question marks here and I almost want to Keenan Allen. So I have Landry, Cooks, Watkins. So my initial thoughts right now are between Brandon Cooks and Travis Kelsey, actually. Him at 48, I think, is a very big discrepancy in where he's going to end up going because obviously Macklin's out. Kelsey should have a huge increase in targets this year and just be a monster for that team. I don't really like Landry. He has no touchdown upside. I think Cooks is really, really going to be that weapon for them in New England. So I'm going to grab Cooks here. I've seen a lot of a lot of articles recently about how the number one wide receiver in New England has, as there's been multiple times where the number one wide receiver for Brady has seen, you know, 100 and 40, 150 plus targets. And, you know, all reports all offseason are basically how Brandon Cooks is the best talent they've had since Randy Moss. Obviously, it's a ridiculous comparison, the two, but you get what they're saying there. I think, you know, Bill Belichick's going to be able to utilize Cooks in so, so many ways. He's one of those guys that could just turn a six yard dump off on the on your own 10 yard line into a 90 yard touchdown. And I think that's going to be ridiculous for Tom Brady to be able to utilize. I know they have a lot of weapons, but I think Cooks is the only real outside weapon because they have Gronk and they have they have Edelman over the middle. In terms of you know the outside receiving, I, I could see Cooks exploding for multiple games of 
10, 12, 13, 14 catches and, you know, 150 plus yards. So I really like Cooks there. And I already have A.J. Green as my wide receiver one. So it's not like if Cooks, for some reason, bails out, then, um, you know, then I'm screwed there at the wide receiver position or anything like that. So and Landry's a safe pick there, too. His floor is, is nice, but his ceiling is a lot lower. Uh, Sammy Watkins is just too risky for me. He burned me last year. I ain't going to let it happen again. So coming around the turn, I really like... Um, let's see. Out of the wide receivers right here, I love Crabtree, I love Terrell Pryor, and I love Larry Fitz. Um, if Kelsey's available, I'm going to go with Kelsey there. I usually advocate for the late round tight end. Like, I would love to wait for Doyle, but I, I think Kelsey going 10 picks after Jordan Reed or 20 picks after Gronk is just ridiculous in terms of the amount of opportunity he should see in, in uh, KC. Yeah, and Greg Olson just went before Kelsey, which is just crazy to me. So while I do like other players on the board, I love Kelsey here. So that shores up my tight end position. Won't have to worry about that for the rest of the season. Never misses a game. Played in all 16 games throughout the three years. Um, so, you know, that's just ni it's nice to have that there because a lot of people, you know, will go with the late round tight end and then sometimes off the stream and worry about that all year. But with Kelsey, you're pretty set to go. So when I do mock drafts, like I, I obviously pick based on how my league is set up. So if push comes to shove and I pick two wide receivers, I'll, you know, like I play two flex spots. So technically I can do these two wide receivers and then another two and have all of them still be starting in my lineup. But on the ESPN, the way it's set up right here, they only do two running backs, two wide receivers, and one flex. So I'll still draft that way. It's also annoying because in my league, obviously, there's keepers. So you can't you can't draft with those guys in mock drafts. You can't, I uh, forget what I was even going to say. You know, so it knocks out, like, better players that are that would be in the draft. So, like, the ADP that you would normally get, say, like, Cook's at, maybe, he, or Kelsey at, you know, maybe that's there's five keepers already taken out before that. So maybe Kelsey wouldn't have been available there. What you can do is, uh, let me show you this real quick. Yeah, draft wizard. I don't know if you guys have ever messed around with this. The draft wizard by Fantasy Pros is pretty customizable when you start doing mock drafts. If you want to, it's only you against a computer, which sucks, but you could like customize how the positions are. You can, I think it's free. So you can log in here and you can have your league and you can type in which keepers uh, people in your league are taking. So that way, when you do the mock drafts on there, they're already out of the system, which is pretty cool. All right, so we had, okay, so my guys, Terrell's gone, uh, Tariq Hill. Danny Wood at Tymont Fitz. Okay, so I'm up next. Who do we like here? <laughs> See, th this is why I'm glad I, I went wide receiver, wide receiver, tight end, because there are running backs here that I really still like. Oh, he took Dalvin Cook, who I liked a lot. So you have Spencer Ware, who I truly believe is still going to be the workhorse there in KC. I love Pierre Garcon in PPR. Jameson Crowder, I love in PPR as well. Joe Mixon. I think Joe Mixon is going to be my guy here for this pick. I just am such a believer in this guy's talent. You know, there's reports that Gio, I love him as my RB2. So Gio might miss the first couple games of the season. That being said, Mixon is way better than Jeremy Hill as a runner. Hill's been terrible the last couple of years. It's his contract year, so he'll be out of there. And they picked Mixon for the future. He's going to run wild. They're going to give him a ton of workload there, especially if Gio misses time. And I think Mixon and Gio are kind of redundant in terms of talent because what Gio does well is pass catch, and Mixon is arguably the best pass catcher in this draft class even. Um, obviously, McCaffrey is incredible, uh, but Joe Mixon in his own right is it's like an Arian Foster or one of those guys. It, it just comes so naturally to him, you can tell. All right, sick dude. Someone took Kenyon Drake at fifty-eight. You know, and I'm also one of those. I, I don't. I don't mess with QBs until later in the draft because Andrew Luck is still waiting at pick sixty-five. There's still so much talent on the board. Still so many players that I like. There's so many good late-round running backs that you can get. Mike Gillisley, I love in that blunt role. Amir Abdullah, I absolutely love. But Garrett Blunt, I don't understand how he's going so late. I think I talked about it in my Philly review, my sleeper review. And I think it's going to be something to do with this in my bold prediction article and, and video that I put out soon. Blunt was so good, obviously, because he had so much scoring opportunity in New England, right? Well, let me get my pick right quick. So right now we have, you know, I'd be up to my flex spot, so I can pretty much draft at will here. I think I'm going to go with Amir Abdullah. I'm really banking on him uh, to have a breakout year this year. I, I know I've talked about Pierre Garcon a lot and how much I like him in PPR, but... I think the upside of Abdullah in the sixth round is just too good for me to pass up on. He'll have the best offensive line that he's had in Detroit by far since since he's came in the NFL, you know, and uh, he was averaging like 4.3 or 4.4 yards per carry behind an awful offensive line through the first two years. 
Now he's healthy. He's good to go. I, I just think everything clicks for Abdullah this year. I loved him coming out of school. I think he's a, like really an elite talent. He's ready to roll. Husker do's, Husker don'ts. There's just so much value at, at this point in the draft. Come on, guy. So we just had CJ Anderson, Matt Ryan, Andrew Luck. So there's going to be a little spill of QBs going off the board. Russell Wilson at 85. That's such good value. It's unbelievable. Delaney Walker. Like, how are you going to take Delaney Walker? There's like four starting running backs still there on the board. So Amir is my flex numero uno. What's this thing about Garrett Blunt? So yeah, obviously he was so good because he had so many scoring opportunities, right? He led the NFL in rushes inside the five with 24. He also led the NFL in rushes inside the 10 and the red zone. But inside the five, he had 24. Ryan Matthews for the Eagles was fourth in the NFL with 16 rushes inside the five. And he only played in 13 games. So there's a ton of scoring opportunity there, and now Ryan Matt will... He's not cut yet. I don't really know what the fuck's going on in Philly, but as soon as he's healthy, he's supposed to get cut. Blunt's going to take over that role. Playing a full 16 games, if you prorate that out, it's 18 and a half touches, or 18 and a half carries inside the five. That's like... It's not that much less than he had in New England. So I could definitely see LeGarrette Blunt just being an absolute value at where he's at and just... Just putting up another like like top 20 year again. He's a starting running back in the NFL. He should get all the early down work. He should get all the goal line work. Nothing I don't like about Blunt this year. I'm probably going to try to shore up. What do we have? Okay, so Eddie, I don't like Eddie Lacy. Better pick 80 if he's there. It's very good value. Gillisley I like a lot too. We're getting pretty thin at wide receiver though. Oh, I love Eric Decker. I think Eric Decker leads the Titans in touchdowns. Wow, there's no wide receivers going after that. And that's also something you should look at. Obviously, based draft uh, draft based on value, but when you get lower in the drafts, like there's still a lot of good running backs left here, obviously. Perkins, Kelly should be starters. Um, like I said, LeGarrette Blunt and stuff. Doug Martin, who should be an RB1 once he's back from suspension. Um, but there's not a lot of good wide receivers, so the fall off is going to be big once these first guys go. Cameron Meredith is one of my guys that I love. Oh, Sneed. Easy. Never mind. I love Cameron Meredith, but the fact that he's missing six to eight weeks with that thumb is really scary, considering that they're going to have a new quarterback, whether it's Glennon or Trubisky. And like as a young player for both of them, quarterback and wide receiver, you need that time to develop the chemistry. So we had Willie Sneed, who I, who's someone who's been growing on me so much this offseason, who I really, 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 really like. I would like to do another wide receiver here, but to me, there's just too much value in the Garrett Blunt. So I'm going to go with Blunt there. Back to Willie Sneed. So why do I like Willie Sneed? Obviously, uh, Brandon Cooks is gone, so a lot of targets are available. Sneed's been nice. He's had 900 yards in the last two years. He's getting super undervalued. Should get a ton of targets. You know, Breeze is obviously a great quarterback. When you're picking between wide receivers later in the draft, for me, even early in the draft too, when you look at look at year over year, like when you're deciding between two wide receivers, look back the year prior to that and see which one busted out. Like last year, I was all over Robinson, Allen Robinson, Brandon Marshall, Sammy Watkins, all early in the draft. They all busted out, and I realized when you look at like the top 10 wide receivers, top 10 ranked wide receivers, they all had really good quarterbacks, if not elite quarterbacks throwing to them. So for the most part, when it comes to consistency, when you want to predict year-over-year -year stats for wide receiver, especially the elite ones, more often than not, go with the one that has a proven, really good quarterback. You look at Allen Robinson, Blake Bortles, Brandon Marshall, whoever the fuck he had thrown to him last year, Sammy Watkins, Hurt. Obviously, that's different, but you, you get what I'm saying, right? And then you look at the other guys that finished inside the top 10 last year. So you had like Devonta Adams and Jordy Nelson, Aaron Rodgers, you had T.Y. Hilton, you had Michael Thomas, you had Brandon Cooks, you had Antonio Brown, you had Julio Jones, like all really good quarterbacks throwing them the ball. So, you know, while the upside is there for a breakout year or a big year, consistency, consistency year over year, I would say is more predicated on having a really good quarterback throwing you the ball than anything else and not so much talent. Well, talent obviously is a big, big piece, but... Ooh, I would love to get Doug Martin here. A lot of these, like, I, there's no way Doug Martin lasts until, what am I, in the ninth round of a 12-team league. But uh, I'm going to take him just because why the fudge would I not? He's suspended the first three games, but, you know, reports this offseason have just been, like, out of control for him um, about how good he's looked. And, you know, he's back to his whatever season it was form that he broke out and just had a monster year. So I like Doug Martin because he has RB1 upside when he is back. Okay, so like literally I'm the only one left in this draft. I will probably fast forward this video until something else interesting happens. So I'll see you guys, or I finish the draft, so I'll see you guys in a little bit. Hope you all miss me. 
So this was my final team right here. Basically, after you guys left, I think I snagged uh, my quarterback, Mariota. I got him like the 11th or 12th round. Now, I didn't want to pick a defensive player or a kicker, and I wanted to make a point, which I did last time. And I'll keep making these every time I, I do a mock draft. And basically, it's it's that if you're drafting any, any time before like the last week of August or two weeks prior to August, do not draft a kicker or a defensive player. The reason being is use those spots for flex players, right? Pick a, a Hail Mary or a handcuff player or anyone that has good value that's still left on the board rather than a kicker or a defense. Because kickers and defense, uh, first of all, the uh, predicting where those players, are, unless you get like an elite defense, kickers are irrelevant because there's only like one guy that's ever good. But unless you get an elite defense or an elite kicker, it's impossible to predict which one of the bottom barrel guys are going to do anything. So don't kick, don't pick them right away because you can pick one up off the uh, the waiver wire. And what you want to do is pick, like I said, a Hail Mary or a good value or a flex play because there's still time left in the off season. You never know what's going to happen. You never know if an injury is going to occur. You never know if you know you grab the backup for like a stud running back, and in the third preseason game where they play like three quarters, he tears his ACL, right? Then you have that backup guy who probably wouldn't have been drafted had you picked the kicker or defense in the last couple rounds. And then as the season, you know, as the season approaches, say like uh, two or three days before season kicks off, then you could just drop them and add someone else. I mean, unless it's like a penalty or unless you have to pay money, which some leagues do to pick up players, then don't do that, obviously. But if you're drafting throughout the summer, which a lot of people do, like in August, definitely don't fill up your kicker or your defensive spot. Unless for some reason you want to reach for like an elite defense, but I don't, that's just not my strategy. I think it's better to do this. Anyways, I grab, oh no, I just spilled my water everywhere. Sick, dude. Sick, bro. So these are, this is my final lineup. I would be ecstatic if this was my actual team this year. Quarterback Marcus Mariota also grabbed Dalton in the last round. I usually don't do two quarterbacks, but I honestly, I'm not like, I don't love Marcus Mariota. Big Ben was still on the board, who I debated, but I still want Mariota just because he has so many weapons to work with there and such a great offensive line. You got a car alarm going off in the bike, love that. Picked up another tight end, which I don't usually do. Honestly, I forgot I picked Travis Kelsey. So I grabbed Jack Doyle too, who is easily my favorite late round tight end this year. I think he's an easy like top seven, eight finish. He'll be in my tight end sleeper video that's coming out, I don't know, sometime this week. And then I have two of my other favorite wide receivers that I put in my breakout and or sleeper list for wide receivers, Terrell Williams and Quincy, 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 Rincy, Pincy, and Nunwa. I don't know. I just think my team is stacked in this sense, but mock draft tips, I would try to draft as closely as possible you can to, to the league settings that you're in. Practical. If you're doing something, like I got Kinsey New Line, like this, the 14th round or something, it's not going to be the case when the season rolls around, so don't expect things to work out that way. But, you know, you just get a feel for where players are going so that the next time you draft, you'll be like, oh, okay, this is a round where if I need, if I have a couple guys that I love, this is where I'm gonna to need to reach for them, right? Don't go by the rankings that, that you do your mock drafts in because that's not how it's gonna go in real life. Like there are gonna be times where say someone's ranked like 70th, but they're going in the fourth or fifth round. Like you'll have to reach for there. And doing mock drafts, you'll know that after you do them uh, like a good amount of time. And I think it's the best prep for your actual draft just to do that stuff. So that's gonna conclude the video. As always, if you enjoyed, please give it the thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you are new. Uh, we'll be coming at you all summer with some good information, with whatever, 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 that kind of stuff. And uh, follow us on Twitter if you need any fantasy football league gear. I have the link below for Fantasy Jocks, my affiliate link, belts, championship trophies, draft board kits, all that kind of good stuff. So it's all down there in the description, and yeah, I'll yeah. see you all next time. Peace out. We the best music, DJ Khaled. You know I like them special made for me yeah. I call them in the demonstrate for me Ooh, yeah. Skip to when he care up on everybody, yeah Cause my little baby ain't for everybody, yeah